pandemic is wreaking havoc on our country, included and on our economy. One group that help has been slow to come to are the self-employed business owners. Many are prohibited from doing their work, but many of them are receiving no financial help. Our two guests today, both who own businesses, know the struggle all too well. Today, we welcome Caitlin Peranto of Jay and Katie Bazina of Lowell. Welcome to the show. Hi. So, hey, um, hey. so uh, I guess all three of us are actually in the same boat. We all own our own businesses. And uh, for the most part, do you agree with me in the ideal time? That's a wonderful experience. Yeah, um, it's prosperous and it's great to be in charge of your own schedule and build up your own clientele who knows you personally and be able to impact your community in a positive way uh, by influencing the community as an entrepreneur and a business owner. Usually it's fantastic. Right. What about you, uh, Katie? How do you feel about owning your own business in, you know, it, it, in a booming economy that we used to have up until like two, uh, you know, a month ago? <laughs> Well, man, I, I got to say, it's been a crazy journey uh, just starting out. I mean, I just began my business uh, in December, and I've been doing massage therapy since 2013. Been loving it ever since. Um, but honestly, ever since the COVID-19 and the spread of the fear and creating this pandemic in itself, I feel like it's, it's made a huge impact on small and large businesses alike and individuals. And honestly, it hasn't really left us with much of a choice right now. Um, and Caitlin, uh, I'm sure you can agree and we'll probably touch upon this, that it hit, um, you know, it has a lot of us, the media has a lot of us, um, working towards jumping through all these hoops right now, as you know, like the CARES Act, um, the, the stimulus checks, some people are getting it, some people are not. And it's leaving a lot of people frustrated and confused and not really knowing what to do next because um, we're forced to be, you know, told to stay inside doesn't leave us with much options to make any money other than to wait for it. But honestly, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable at all for people to just sit at home and, you know, live off of their savings. I know I'm living off of my savings and right now I'm grateful that I have at least like a hundred dollars in food stamps, but that only gets you so far. And, um, honestly, it's just, it's frustrating and you, you're trying to stay positive. And right now, I think we're doing a great job virtually right now. Like, this is fantastic. I've never done anything like this before. Just being on Zoom and talking to people about such uh, a, a huge topic. Um, it's bringing people together, but yet it's, it's really hard financially. And I'm not gonna lie, like, um, I wish that there were more options for us to choose from on to make this easier for everybody. Now tell me, what's the name of your business? Uh, Vizina's Healing Hands. Right. Okay, uh, uh, Caitlin, I, I suspect you have some of the, main, the, the same concerns. And, and what is it you do for a living in the name of your business? Well, Scott, I own Live Iron Tattoo in North Troy, formerly Contour Studios Tattoo and Gallery in Newport. Right. Um, this is my sixth year as a business owner, and I'm a tattoo artist. Right. And uh, how is this? So you're not getting any money either. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, and it's frustrating because I don't think young entrepreneurs who are in close contact businesses should have to blow through their saving because the government is telling us that we can't go to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my case, I own my building. I don't have a landlord that I need to, you know, be worried about infecting with COVID-19. I own my building. My clients 
and I usually operate on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We don't take walk-ins. It's appointment only. So even though it's a contact service, it's not like there's a bunch of people crowded into my business. You know, it's me and my one other, other employee and we work on two separate floors. Um, so it's just frustrating that the state and federal government can tell me what I can do with my personal property that I pay taxes on while simultaneously ensuring that I'm not making any money to pay for a living. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's ludicrous. You know, I, um, we, have, my wife and I, you know, we own Vermont's Northland Journal. Mm -hmm. Unlike the two of you, we're able to continue to limp along. It's hurt us financially, but we're able to do it. So we didn't, we decided not to jump through these hoops, but the stories you tell, I'm hearing from numerous people. Mm -hmm. you're, there's a lot of people in your boat. And it seems like we, well, particularly like, the two of you and others who have decided to jump through these hoops that that um, you've been forgotten because I hear a lot of politicians on TV crowing about they're taking care of everybody. What's happened to you? I would like to talk about the gross miss, I guess, praise for Phil Scott. So Phil Scott has been covered in the mainstream media for his amazing response to the coronavirus. And that's all fine and dandy when it comes to businesses who have paid into the unemployment trust throughout the years. Businesses that aren't small businesses, businesses that aren't made up of cooperatives of independent contractors. We're the ones left behind. And he says, oh, there's the CARES Act. Oh, there's the SBA loans. Oh, there's all these other resources for you. But at the end of the day, there isn't because they all ran out of money. And so I did some digging and I found um, the SBA small business, fi uh, small business profile from 2018 on the state of Vermont. And it says that 59.4% of Vermonters are small business employees. So in 2018, that was 158,098 individuals in the state of Vermont employed by small businesses. It's safe to assume that a large percentage of these are small businesses that are made up of a cooperative of sole proprietors and independent contractors like ourselves. So all of these people technically are being left behind. And Phil Scott likes to say he's got it all covered, but the numbers from the federal agency that he is saying is gonna help us say differently. So it's constant contradictions and it's constant waiting. And they say, we're gonna give you these funds as soon as possible when you call the hotline listed on the Vermont State website. But essentially the hotline just says that they're waiting for the federal government. So according to you know the ADA or the what SBA loans, we have over 150,000 Vermonters who are probably going without assistance. Right. I bet you the surest way to get attention is uh, try giving somebody a tattoo now and the state will be there. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, and, and not in a good way either. Nope, so they will revoke your license. So they don't want you to be able to work. I've had several people ask me to come get tattoos at my house. But I can't do that because the state of Vermont will revoke my business license and my license to tattoo. So essentially, mm -hmm. they're forcing us to stop working. They're saying that they'll fine us if we do not follow the Stay Home, Stay Safe Act and precautions. But they're also not giving us any financial assistance to get by. So how are you, how are you surviving? Well, I've saved a bunch of money. Um, my boyfriend lives with me. He just gave me all the money for the, like normally we split bills. He's just been paying them all. Um, and I have this raffle going that I started on Facebook to help artists um, through the COVID crisis. And I've raised like $3,400 to distribute between like almost 30 different artists. And I've made personally like $300 on it 
and um, then I've been selling artwork, like commissions, like the people who own Booten's Market commissioned me like a couple hundred bucks to like paint a saw with a sunflower on it. Like people in the community are uh, helping other people in the community get by. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to do with the state and federal government. It's the community. Exactly. Okay. And I just want to touch upon like what Caitlin had said. I want to say thank you, by the way, for helping like put me in the raffle because um, helping kind of raise that money helped pay for my rent that was the only reason like that i could get by also to like pay for rent not because of the government like you said it's the community and hard times like this like just want to say thank you caitlin because you are a part of the reason why this community is still like afloat in a way and finding hope and optimism to keep moving forward and to ask these tough questions you know yeah. and just and spread your truth like this is really affecting like your business like as you know somebody who loves and enjoys doing what you do is very passionate about it like you're great at what you do and um the whole like COVID-19 like it is a serious business and I feel like it's just it's crazy again that there isn't more options to um help us and knowing that we're being put on the back burner, really. How long so, can the two of you hold? How can the how long can the two of you hold on? Oh gosh, that's a tough how, question. Yeah, that is. A, it's all relative to how, what I can hustle for artwork and what I can hustle <laughs> for other people's artwork. So Katie was just in a raffle. That's why she was thanking me. She just uh, we raised her two hundred dollars. So we sold twenty raffle tickets at ten dollars, and she mailed like some jewelry that she made to the winner. So that's like an example of what I have going on here in this group. And there's been like thirty different people who it's helped so far. So luckily. It's like crowdfunding kind of. So if you can get people <laughs> in the community to give you 10 bucks and then somebody might win something. And if you can get 10 people to give you 10 bucks then you have a hundred dollars. Right. Well, you know, that's the one thing is I have noticed is if there's anything that's come good out of this pandemic is the fact is I think the people themselves, the ordinary people are, I've seen some real generous, good people and that's the one thing I do hope that with all the bad that's come out of it, I hope we don't forget all the good that's come out of it because I'm sure the two of you even have created new relationships because of it. So once things get up and running, you know, you'll probably have new customers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, one thing that I have noticed though, that I think is definitely ripping our community apart is the protests that have surfaced uh, for people wanting to go back to work versus people who want to stay home. And what I want to say as a small business owner is we need to focus our efforts in ensuring that the federal and state governments can keep us safe while we stay home. Gover mm -hmm. Governor Phil Scott put in the Stay Home, Stay Safe Act and said that they would help us if we stayed home. And now we're still waiting for their help. And instead of us coming at the government, demanding our tax dollars go to us for economic relief, we're coming at each other demanding to go back to work and put ourselves in harm's way. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's all very misguided. And Small business owners are in the same boat, but we need to remember that our safety and public safety is important and fighting each other is going to get us nowhere. What we need to do is realize that we control this government and that is our money and we need to ensure that we're getting it and not large corporations. Because this week there is an article circulating CNN, Fox, New York Times about how big billionaire corporate Republicans were funneling money out of the CARES Act. And now we're waiting to get our money from the CARES Act. It was supposed to go live yesterday and they're awaiting federal instruction. So it seems to me that the money's gone somewhere and it seems to me as in typical American fashion, probably in the hands of large corporations that earmark and control our government. In the money, the amount of money that the two of you need is relatively minimal 
Very minuscule compared to the billions of bailouts going into these large corporations. Yes, they need to be bailing out Main Street, not Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, both of you, what do you, uh, you know, once the pandemic is behind us, uh, do you think you can get back to business as usual? Or do you think it's going to be a while before people are comfortable? It's all about... The loyalty. So I have clients already sending me deposits saying, I want to be the first person back in your chair. So when it comes to already established relationships, those are going to be the bread and butter because I think coercing new people to gain trust and feel safe and comfortable in a close contact business service environment is going to be close to unattainable for the next four to six months. Mm -hmm. That's my hypothesis. Is that your theory too, uh, Katie? Yeah, I have to say, like, for somebody who is in close contact with people on a regular day-to-day -day basis, if I was back at work, um, I mean, I think it's on the positive side, being a massage therapist and working with people, it will boost people's immune system and kind of help off, fight off any kind of viruses. So um, I think that's a plus, but at the same time, a lot of people are going to be thinking in the back of their minds that I don't, you know, I, I just came out from this pandemic and I don't know if this person had cleaned, you know, like a lot of people are going to have that on the back of their minds, I think. So and their but, contact of other people like you don't know who they're going home to or if they have health you know problems and so depending on who they're associated with on a daily basis is going to be their comfort level yes thank you i think uh i think the the thing too is is the economy was doing so good and, i know uh, and then then it comes to this screeching halt uh i'd like to think that um that we're nearing an end uh, to the um, to it. Uh, I, I'm not certainly not going to guarantee it, but um, you know, I just don't know how many p businesses at this rate won't be able to reopen just because they're going to run out of money. And uh, I, I think those numbers might really surprise us when they happen because um, um, there's there's a lot of people out there with overhead. That 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 they're they're losing every day, and um, I, I think we're going to be surprised by the number of small businesses that are just going to call it a day. I think the surprising thing about that is the number of money that's already been funneled in to large back companies that are quote unquote too big to fail. Why are we funneling money into companies that are too big to fail when we already know they're too big to fail? Why don't we just, you know? forgive their debt or whatever and take that grant money and give it to companies that aren't too big to fail and give it to businesses that are small and actually need it. At the end of this, I'd like to actually see a list of where the AD, uh, where the loan and grant money went and where the CARES Act money went. Mm -hmm. um, because I would like to know if it was associated with any personal agendas. And to be honest, unfortunately, I think, I think it is. Otherwise, I think more small businesses would have seen that money by now. And the one gentleman who I talked to who did receive the loan, uh, he told me that he went to a bank that did lending actually from the SBA. So he went to an SBA lender and that's how he got his approval. But he wasn't, he, his business isn't even in Vermont. Um, I've just been talking about it on social media uh, to try and gather people's opinions. And he messaged me and told me he deliberately seeked out an SBA lender and they gave him like a $6,000 grant or something. Um, you know, but Phil Scott and other politicians are claiming that all these small businesses are eligible for $10,000 in grants, you know, but that's, it's just not true. So one thing I want to talk about is uh, the Vermont website um, from the Vermont Department of Labor, like the Vermont official state website. I'm sure a lot of the self-employed people are very familiar with that website. Um, yep. 
So when you go on the information for self-employed and independent contractors website, the first thing they do is put up this pandemic unemployment assistance hotline that they tell you to call for daily updates for the self-employed independent contractors and sole proprietors. Um, so when you call it, you get all excited expecting all this great information that changes every day, but it's actually the same message on a loop mm -hmm. by like an automatic robot and you can tell that they didn't even put punctuation in and it's just telling you that they're not taking any applications anymore and they're awaiting um, directions from the federal government so when you continue on this website to find additional information on the cares act and they have like a whole page of questions answered when you go down to the section that says if you've already applied for benefits and are self-employed, the whole thing is typos. Hmm. So like there, we've been waiting for a month to get paid. We've been told all this different stuff that there's going to be all this money that there hasn't been. And we've been told to focus on this website. Most of us have already applied for unemployment benefits. So this is what we have to look forward to a message on a loop that isn't even properly punctuated in typos in the one section that's supposed to answer your question. So uh, I just think that the state of Vermont isn't spending taxpayer dollars in a frugal way because they made a big stink about how they outsource this new portal technology to a different state to get it up and running in time to distribute these funds that they don't have. I'm sure there's plenty of web coding and technology businesses in Vermont who could have loved that business to design this portal, but instead, in typical state of Vermont fashion, they outsourced that too. Uh, we really grinds my gears. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all, the one thing I, I, I have figured out about uh, you, Caitlin, you're not shy. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, Tommy, you only have about five more minutes uh left uh what do you what are your thoughts what are any more your thoughts uh katie um i mean just to again touch upon the fact that what caitlin had said about like the sba the cares act the ten thousand dollars for small businesses and individuals um again like i've i've also done a lot of like applications for a lot of that been denied for unemployment so um it's just it's again it's interesting to know that the government is putting out misleading information and um i'm just grateful for again our community and i'm glad that we can find some optimistic um optimistic outlooks here on how to best approach this but um, it would be really nice to have some assistance from our government. And if they're going to be making any promises, I would hope that they would try to help some of us, like small businesses and individuals out. Right. Uh, you know, I, from what I could see is the, uh, the hands-on people, you're about, it sounds like you're going to be some of the last people too, to be oh, coming yeah. back online. First to close, last to open, no benefits, baby. Exactly. Home with okay. Free. Okay. Uh, let's hear some uh, final words from the two of you. You know what you if you if you have Governor Scott or any other officials watching and listening. Uh, what do you want? <laughs> um, honestly, like I, if they're going to again just promises. Uh, if you're going to say that you are going to help us out, please help us out because. Um, again, it's not sustain sustainable to be living off of nothing. And um, again, right now, like we're getting by, but what if this pandemic keeps going on months from now? What are we gonna do? How are we going to address this? And um, if we go back to normal and this happens again, how, how can we fix this? Okay, Caitlin, I'm gonna see if I can pull a few more words out of you. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So my problem here with the old 
Vermont Montpelier State Administration here, particularly Phil Scott, um, is the trickle effect of restarting the economy. That's cute, but how can you tell a few people they can go back to work as non-essentials and a few that they can't while continuing to do nothing about their economic state of welfare? It's ludicrous and it's leaving people behind and it's ensuring the failure of not only small businesses and entrepreneurs in Vermont, but the failure of the faith that we once had in our state government. So you're gonna have to get it together, bud. <laughs> okay, uh, I wanna thank you uh, both for, uh, for coming on the show. I, can, I really can, as a self-employed person myself, I, I feel your pain. I'm, I'm really, uh, even though I've been able to uh, keep running, um, I, I, I can feel your economic pain. So, uh, so I'm with you. So thank you, uh, thank you both for coming on. Thank you thank so much, Scott. Thank, thank you. you for having us. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice.